five things bring about the seasons on Earth. First, the rotation of the Earth around its axis. Remember, the Earth rotates from west to east. This gives us our 24-hour day. Secondly, our revolution around the sun. It takes 365 and a quarter days for the Earth to go around the sun one time. In other words, we make 365 and a quarter rotations each time we make one full revolution or orbit around the sun. Number three, the axial tilt. Remember, this describes the fact that the Earth's axis is indeed tilted. If you recall, the angle of inclination describes that tilt and puts numbers on it, which is 66 and a half degrees from the plane of the ecliptic and 23 and a half degrees from a perpendicular line drawn from the center of the Earth and the plane of the ecliptic. Parallelism. This means that the Earth's axis is always pointed in the same direction, which remember, in the Northern Hemisphere is towards Polaris, which is the North Star. And finally, all four of these go to fluctuations in insulation. First of all, fluctuations means varying amounts of insulation. And notice this word. It's not insulation with a U, it's insolation with an O. Insolation. Here's what it means. The IN part is for incoming. The SOL part, as you may very well have figured out, stands for solar. So we have incoming solar. And then the ASIAN part stands for radiation. Therefore, insolation means incoming solar radiation. This is what we're talking about. Essentially, insolation means the energy received within the Earth system from the sun. Of course, you know the sun is this massive ball of energy that's blasting energy out into space in all directions off of its body. We have a relatively small planet, and as we're revolving around it, we are intersecting some, a very, very small amount of that energy. Basically, we're bumping into that energy. That energy that comes from the sun that we run into and then begins to enter into our Earth system at the top of our atmosphere, three or 400 miles above us, we refer to that as insulation, in other words, incoming solar radiation. The amount of insulation that any place on Earth receives is contingent upon two things. Now, every place on Earth receives a different amount of insulation daily. As you'll see, this is based on latitude. So today, we are receiving a different amount of insulation than we would have received yesterday. And tomorrow, we are going to receive a different amount than we are receiving today. Here are the two things that determine the amount of insulation that any place on Earth receives. Number one, the number of hours of daylight. This is critical because the sun must be above the horizon in order for us to get any insulation. As the sun's energy blasts out into space and it hits our planet, the backside of the planet, the darkened half of the planet, receives literally zero insulation. The sun's energy does not wrap around the planet. What it does is it hits the planet and then the stuff that doesn't go into our system just goes straight out into space and continues to move along. Therefore, the longer the sun is above the horizon, the greater the amount of insulation. In other words, the longer the daylight period, the greater the amount of energy we're going to get from the sun. And obviously that means also the greater the amount of, the amount of heat that we can get from the sun. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. I believe it takes 57 days for Mercury to make one full revolution around the sun. But Mercury also makes one rotation with one revolution. So in other words, by Earth days, Mercury takes 57 days to go around the sun and it takes 57 days to make one rotation. Because of that, very much like the moon for us, one side of Mercury is always facing the sun and the other side is always facing out into space. The surface of Mercury that faces the sun 
is 700 degrees Fahrenheit. The backside is minus 400. This is because it receives no energy from the sun on the backside and Mercury has no atmosphere. The second thing that determines the amount of insulation any place on earth receives is the angle of the sun. I really mean the angle of the sun at noon. The closer the sun is to a 90 degree angle, in other words, direct sunlight, vertical rays of the sun, the sun directly over your head, you would have to look straight up to see it, the greater the amount of insulation. This is why I went through the subsolar point in so much detail because the subsolar point matters. It's the one place on earth that is receiving 90 degree angle sunlight. 90 degree angle sunlight is maximum solar radiation. So these are the two things, the number of hours of daylight. In order to heat things up, you want to have long daylight periods and the angle of the sun. The closer you can get the sun to a 90 degree angle, the more energy you are going to get from the sun. Okay, let's take a look here. The amount of insulation that any place receives varies from place to place and day to day. Okay, varies from place to place and from day to day. This is determined by latitude, which is why I have this diagram here for you on the bottom right hand side. If you look, this is the summer solstice for the Northern Hemisphere. Notice that at 23 and a half degrees north, the Tropic of Cancer, the sun is at a 90 degree angle. So if you were standing at the Tropic of Cancer on the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere, June 22nd, the sun would be directly over your head. However, if you are at 66 and a half degrees north, Notice at the Arctic Circle, the sun would be at a 47 degree angle. And if you were at the North Pole, it would only be at a 23 and a half degree angle, which basically is your eyes looking straight out. And that would be at noon. That would be as high as the sun would ever get that day. Then notice at 23 and a half degrees south, the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun is at a 43 degree angle on that day. So that would be maximum solar radiation on that day. That's how high the sun would be in the sky. And then at 66 and a half degrees south, the Antarctic Circle, notice the sun would be really literally right over the lip of the horizon and there would be no solar radiation coming in. Because of this, there's only one area on Earth that can receive maximum solar radiation. And as a result of that, it's the center of heat energy on the planet. That area is found from 23 and a half degrees north, the Tropic of Cancer, to 23 and a half degrees south, the Tropic of Capricorn. The reason is because this is the only place that receives a subsolar point, which means 90 degree angle sunlight, which means maximum ability to heat the planet. Every place outside of that, so outside of those parameters, that would mean every place from 23 and a half degrees north to the North Pole and 23 and a half degrees south to the South Pole, those places do not receive 90 degree angle sunlight. The sunlight is at less than a 90 degree, degree angle, which means less insulation, less capability to heat the planet. If you think about this, there are 180 degrees of latitude, 90 degrees in the Northern Hemisphere and 90 degrees in the Southern Hemisphere. Of that entire 180 degrees of latitude, only 47 degrees the area between 23 and a half degrees north and 23 and a half degrees south can receive maximum solar radiation. Longitude is important, but it's only really important for one thing, which is the time zones. You could put longitude and set it up in any way you want. Latitude plays a part in many different aspects of this planet. 